everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Now today I am excited to do a second collaboration with the lovely Christine Stokes. So we did the first collaboration using a textures line and uh, you all loved it and lots of you said you hope we do it again. So we are, this time we're doing it with my recent launch and it's Snow Flurry. So uh, I'm not sure what Christine's going to be making, I presume a card, but I don't know whether she's going to be working with this, with the snowflake dies, there's lots of options. Um, so I'm going to be using this layering panel first of all and we decided to make it a little bit more fun by choosing again a colour combination and seeing how we both interpret that. So this is the combination that we're going to be using. Um, so I, I'm just in love with teals, teals and red burgundies in there absolutely love it so it's going to be a bit different um, because I wouldn't usually mix these colors in a card despite absolutely loving the combination so the first thing I'm going to do is um, cut out this snowflake panel because um, it's I absolutely love it now it's two pieces You've got the back piece, the back panel, which it looks a little bit like um, swollen <laughs> snowflakes there because these then layer on, and uh, let's just make sure I get that the right way, uh, behind this one. So you get your two snowflakes layered up with a bit of a board around. So that's where I'm going to use my two teals from. Now, the first thing I need to do is have these cut down ready to size before um, I cut them out. And that's going to be a five by seven card because this is a five by seven die so there's my light blue and my dark blue I say blue it's actually more of a teal colors and I'm going to cut the top layer out from the light so just putting a little bit of tape onto there just through the gaps in the cutting edge and then the same on this one too so these are my two pieces now I'm going to glue this all together but I am going to be snipping some areas out so I'll glue it first just so that I know exactly where the two parts fit together and then I'll do the snipping afterwards. So certainly round the edge definitely needs some glue and then in any of the larger areas, uh, I think this big snowflake actually is the bit that I'm going to snip away so I just need to make sure everything else is glued down around it. So just using a fine tip applicator dabbing glue onto as many of the snowflake arms as I can there we go then you'll see when I turn this over how it fits beautifully on top there I've got a few little bits still to pop out but I'll do that in a moment there we go okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip around some snowflakes here so that I release this really large snowflake that's in the middle. There we go. Now, if you wanted a quick card, that would just sit onto a card base like so, and you could stamp a sentiment in the middle there. But I'm going to take this another step further. In fact, actually, that would look really lovely if uh, you were to layer up this other snowflake here somehow and just have it even more dimensional but that's not what I'm doing today I'm going to cut myself in fact I'm going to ink first let's ink first and then cut this down to size later and I'm going to incorporate the reds now so onto an A4 piece of watercolor cardstock I'm going to do that smooching technique now I love this technique I'm just going to mix in some distress oxide smooch them onto my mat so I'm starting with a barn door which is a really bright red and going into aged mahogany so we've got barn door at the well the top or the bottom one end and aged mahogany at the other let's just take a water spray and plenty of water quite happy for these to mix a little bit so we can actually do this this way round and take the ink to the paper and just mix that around lovely so we get a really nice watercolor effect just popping this on and making sure that we've pretty much got it edge to edge where we're going to want it now the beauty of oxides is 
they do oxidize when they come into contact with water so you get this kind of white cloudy effect to them which i really love now i'm just getting myself a wet wipe because i've got a bit of excess there so allowing the paper to soak a lot of that up as you can see i'm just going to wipe away the excess now so that i don't stick my hand or a piece of clean cardstock in it later and you want to allow that to dry but that really won't take very long at all so once it's dry again we need to trim this down so that it's five by seven so i just start by trimming along one of the long edges and one of the short edges right up to where the solid color is and then i do my measuring so this end will be my five inch and then this way will be seven inch so i need to pull out the extended arm here and pop that on seven inch there we go so it's a little bit it's a little bit of white up there but i don't think that's going to matter too much so as you can see we're going to have the lovely reds just behind the teal blue there lovely okay so now i'm going to make this into something that's called an everlasting or a never-ending shaker card so what I need to do is ignore my card base for now. I still won't be going on to this just yet, um, but I'm going to wrap around a shaker around this panel. So what I need to do is take myself a piece of acetate that's larger than my panel and give myself enough room for some tabs. And I'm going to need to trim this and score this as well. So again, the same trimmer is going to come in really handy. So let's start with the length. So just popping it there and this I'm cutting it here. So the trimmer does cut acetate beautifully. So trimming the entire panel around. I'm leaving about, I don't know, maybe half an inch around the edge roughly at the moment. So get that excess out of the way. And now I'm going to want to make this more accurate. So placing it on here and popping the edge of the cardstock there and putting my cutting blade which is my orange one out of the way and just using the scoring tool just to mark now I'm just going to fold that now make sure that I've done that enough yep lovely okay so now with that up put my paper in again And again put the other edge in if anything you want your shaker acetate to be ever so slightly larger rather than shorter because otherwise your cardstock is going to bend underneath it again just fold that up all these tabs will be hidden okay so then we need to do the same at the top so i can just score myself a rough sort of half inch tab at the top here fold that up and then use that to butt my cardstock up against and work out where my last tab needs to be now I've got my acetate cut to size with four edges scored I need to snip these edges kind of diagonally across just to give me room to fold each one down so there I've cut the corners now I'm going to just once more just make sure that this fits in if for any reason see there see that how that is bulging slightly I'm just going to snip see, I thought that'd be okay but I'm just going to snip the tiniest slither off of that way I'll do this way as well it won't hurt the actual outer frame is going to be covered over with this so you see the frame around there so you're not going to see that anyway so let's see okay that's much better so I can place that down inside now I'm going to go around the edge around all the tabs with red line tape I've got a nice wide red line tape as well so this takes a little while now I'm going to do first of all I'm just going to do um, three tabs and leave one open doesn't really matter which one you leave open but for now 
just three tabs. There, so I've created a pocket as such around my watercolour card. Now you could of course have stamped your sentiment in there first if you prefer not to do die cut sentiments. Um, but I'm going to die cut mine in or kind of stamp and cut out in a little while but you'll see that shortly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill my shaker with sequins. There we go. Just using that tab that we didn't stick down. So I probably want quite a few of these. I might actually even do a few more. Now you're going to want your card to lay flat. So yeah, just ensure that you're, you don't put so many in that you, your card won't lay flat. And then seal up that last tab. So there you should have a nice never ending shaker. And what I'm going to do is put foam tape all the way along this border. In fact, I had a little bit to snip off one edge. I'd obviously cut the base panel a little bit larger than the top panel. At this stage, if I had something like my sewing machine handy, I would definitely do some stitching around the edge of this frame just to make it look as if it had been stitched together. Um, but unfortunately, I can't do that at the moment. I can't wait to get my sewing machine back in my craft room with me. So I'm going to place foam tape all the way around the edge here making sure that it can't be seen so you might need to cut some strips down perhaps to make sure they are thin enough if you've only got a wider foam tape so now i've got that glued on top of my shaker i can adhere this to the front of my card base so you can see we've got lots of dimension in there and we've got the shakers as well but the shakers go all the way behind all of the snowflakes which i love so I've got some word stamps here from the Texture Snow Flurry collection, which myself and Christine are working with today, both of us. But I've also got these from the Jack Frost collection, which is an older winter collection from Textures. Now there's very few of these left in stock, I know that, but uh, you've got the chipboard words here, which are already cut out for you. So that's the word uh, frosty there, for example. And then you have the same words, but in die form, but these are larger. So if I was to take a, you can see the size there of the letters. They're much, much larger. That's the word shimmering. Um, but again, you've got the same words, but in die form. So you could create your own um, sort of little peek through there if you wanted to, um, or your own label. So I'm going to use this frosty and uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to actually keep it even that color because I really like that. I've got within the bottom here, I've got lots of pieces. So the the centre of the O there will be in here somewhere. Let's just see if I can pick that out. There's one. So there's the centre of the O that I can pop in when I've decided what I'm doing. And then I want the word joy. So the word joy, I'm going to, I think I'm just going to stamp it. It all comes in one stamp, but I'm just going to stamp it in black and cut it out. So I'll do that in my stamping platform onto white cardstock. So I've simply heat embossed one of these grey board pieces, the one that said frosty, uh, just with clear embossing ink and some white powder. I'm going to place that around about there. So it's going to be over the aperture that we've cut out, which the aperture is really there so that we can see uh, the shaker element a little bit better. And just popping the O back in there as well, because I did also emboss that make sure that stays central and you can use just a wet glue onto acetate you don't have to use a special glue it just takes a little bit longer to dry than something like a spray adhesive or red liner tape so just going around now I've also as you saw I stamped the uh, large word panel and I've just cut out with my fussy cutting scissors the word joy oops and also dropped that on there so I will need to clean this off but that will sit, I think, just about there. That's not too bad, actually. It's going to cover over a lot of that glue that I just dropped on there. There we go. So we've got Frosty Joy for the card. Now, as always, the last little thing that I tend to do is take my white paint and a paintbrush and I just flick some, uh, some white over there just to look a bit like snow as well. Um, this For any winter card, this is pretty much a go-to finishing touch. I might also add a few little gems in there, but I just like this 
Now whether it falls on the acetate or whether it falls on the snowflakes, it really doesn't matter. Oh, I like those big blobs as well, not just the small ones. It adds a little bit of texture to areas too. And this is where a lot of people get a bit scared because uh, they're never quite sure whether or not um, it's going to go right. But I don't think you can go wrong really. And it is a water-based paint, so if, if there's an area that you really don't like um, where the paint's landed, leave it to dry and it will scratch off. It goes uh, a little bit powdery, quite easy to scratch off afterwards. There we go. So just pop that away. I always give my paintbrush a good wipe with a wet wipe until I, just until I can get a chance to go and wash it properly with warm soapy water. Lift this up very carefully and wipe here where I've got a few splats too there we go so there is my uh, final card it's the never-ending or everlasting shaker whichever you'd like to call it using those colors these are kind of the distress colors that I pulled out I didn't use the peacock feathers or the salvage patina but I did use aged mahogany and barn door and then that panel again just so that you can see that which is hiding under here is the snowflake layering panel now this is exclusive to craft stash i'll pop all my links down below for you to see and um do pop over and have a look at christine's video as well i know she'll have done something absolutely beautiful with my products i'm so thrilled that she um did this collaboration with me and again i hope we can do it again another time so thank you everybody for watching don't forget to subscribe and of course like the video if you enjoyed this and hopefully I get to see you again very soon.